Hi. So I told you, I don't know, a few months ago, I was gonna start doing some videos. So I did one about using a pen torch for uh, blackening out areas, especially such as the, the heavily burned areas you see here. So I wanted to make one about carving, um, or at least make some about carving. I'm gonna start kind of as a basic level. Uh, I've really, really gotten more and more into carving as, as the years gone past. Um, I can thank a lot of the Facebook communities for that. Uh, Bonnie Gibson. There's a lot of inspiration in the world around us, and uh, and carving, carving has been really neat because it adds it adds so much more dimension to to the gourd, um, and there's so much more that you can do to it. So it kind of takes takes my burning and everything, and, and really puts a lot of contrast to it. Um, a lot of neat features. So there's there's tons that you can do. And the thing that really, really has helped me along the way is, is not only seeing what other people have done, um, it's a lot of, of experimenting, kind of especially just like I do with my burning. Uh, there's, there's a lot of experimenting that goes into it. And, and so it, it's just trying different things, uh, see what works best for you and, and figure out how, how to go from there. So. I have a Dremel. Um, I usually I, I would recommend having a high-speed Dremel or you know one of the more higher-end Dremels. Uh, it has a flex shaft, which makes it where it's really maneuverable uh, with the end here. That that you can really there's a lot of different types of carvers that you can use. This is the one. This has been kind of my workhorse for a while. Um, I have another one, a portable one that I that I saved up and bought. Um, the charger broke and. You know, it's been kind of back and forth with it, but this one, this one's been really a lifesaver. Uh, I broke one flex shaft before. Um, I burnt up a Dremel before, but you know these things have uh, they go through a lot. So um, always, always, always make sure you have a good dust mask. You know this one right here is mine. You see me wear it. I post pictures of me wearing it a lot of times, just so you can, you know block my face so you don't have to see that always make sure you have good eye eyewear protection um, because when you're carving on a gourd you know you're knocking a lot of stuff off you don't want to mess yourself up um, so again the dust mask you know a good dust mask uh, the gourd fibers uh, as you'll see it gets really messy you don't want to breathe that stuff in and you know the more a lot a lot of the gourd people will tell you that that will really really mess with you if you do so Beyond that, um, good open area like outside is good. I do a lot, especially during the winter time. Uh, inside, just always make sure that you're wearing, you know, your, your dust mask and your eyewear and everything. So, as far as there's there's tons of different bits that are out there that you can you can try. Uh, I'll try to post some pictures of other ones that I use later on. But one of the ones I use like a, a carbide uh, tip here recently, here lately. Um, that's what it looks like. This one kind of gives me, it knocks off a lot of the outside, you'll see, because that's that's the shell of the gourd. After it's, it's grown, dried, and uh, ready to use and cleaned, that's what it looks like right there. So what the goal is, and you know, you want to make sure you have a thick enough gourd for this too, because you don't want to carve out through it or have a too weak of a spot. But you see, that's our goal right there. So take that outside off, have that really light relief carved um, inside there. And you don't have to go that that far down. You can just carve out that that outer shell right there and leave it. Uh, still looks pretty cool. So. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this in just a minute. I'm going to come call a little further here uh, just so you can kind of see how it works. Um, and then that way, you know, you can kind of at least start the discussion. So if you have questions or anything like that. Um, and hopefully I'll get more videos out there uh, about doing the filigree holes that I do. Just to kind of add some more instruction to stuff, especially if you're stuck inside, stuck in quarantine. Um, dealing with the coronavirus so
There we go. I look much better now, right? All right, so this is going to be kind of loud just to kind of give you a heads up. So I gave you a second if you want to kind of turn it down. I'm not sure how loud it's going to be, but this thing is not quiet. Usually I'll wear headphones. Um, so always kind of keep that in mind too. There you go. After I do one side, kind of bring it towards the middle, I'll go back on the outside, on the other side, and then even it up. That's where practice comes in uh, over the you know long time now, getting more and more used to carving more and more pieces that I've done. You know, experience is, is key with that. You see, kind of. And this is just the beginning part of it. I'll go through and I'll sand it. Um, I'm going to go back and do some kind of filigree holes to it. Kind of add some holes and, and more to the design. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Kind of get you headed off in the right direction. And otherwise, uh, see you around.